Hey, Spinks from Quiet Cat here. In this video, we're gonna go over the basics of how to safely operate an e-bike. Now, electric bicycles today are very different than the bicycles that we had in the past. We'll call them acoustic bikes to make it easy. A lot of these new modern electric bikes have a lot of power, which is putting a lot more force through the drivetrain components, including the chain rings, the chain, and the rear derailleur. So in order to make these components last as long as possible, we wanna make sure we're operating this properly. On quiet cat bikes, we've got both mid-drive and hub-drive motors, and these basic principles apply to both mid-drive and hub-drive. Although, the mid-drive motor is significantly more important because, of course, the power is going from the chain ring through the chain to rotate the rear wheel. This is where utilization of the gears is the greatest feature of a mid-drive, but it's also paramount that we use these gears in order to operate the bike at different speeds and operate in different types of terrain. So what's crucial about the mid-drive motor, of course, so the mid-drive motor is gonna be pulling on the chain, right? Pulling this way in order to rotate the rear wheel. And what we want is the path of least resistance of all this energy to turn into rotation of the rear wheel. If the wheel is stuck into some dirt, some mud, maybe we're on a hill, there's some rocks or other things in the way, this power is going to pull and pull, and the path of least resistance could be breaking the chain. Especially when we're down here in this ninth gear, the chain is actually at an angle to where it's coming off of the chain ring and immediately going out to the side in order to get all the way to this gear. This creates a shearing force, which causes the chain to peel apart. So we're out here in the mountains. As you can see, we've got a big hill behind us. We've pulled off to the side, and the first thing I notice is a super crucial error. What's happened here is we've come to a stop, and the chain is down here in the smallest gear. Now, when we look at the gears, you're gonna have anywhere from seven to nine different gears here in the rear. Typically, the more gears you have, the more you have the easier or larger gears. Now, common misconception, when we say downshift, you're not actually moving down the cassette. A downshift is actually moving the chain up. So gear number one is always up here at the top. It's the largest gear. Now, if we think about that acoustic bike from the past, if we were to try to climb a hill, we would wanna shift into the easy gears, right? And the easy gears are up here at the top, one, two, and three. And gears one, two, and three are built specifically for climbing up steep mountains, climbing up those steep hills, and making sure that you have the right amount of torque in order to drive the wheel. Now, just like on that acoustic bike, our mid-drive motor is actually benefiting from that easy gear, the same way you would when you're feeling like it's easier to pedal versus more difficult to pedal. In our truck, if we were to try to start out in fifth gear or sixth gear, we would more than likely stall, which is why we always have to start in first or second and then work our way up. It's the same thing on an e-bike, especially with a mid-drive motor. We wanna make sure we're starting up in one of the easier gears. Now that doesn't mean you have to be in gear number one all the time, just like in some vehicles, you don't have to be in first gear, you can start in second. It's all based on what the gear ratio looks like in relation to the terrain that you're on. So if we're on a nice flat surface, I recommend starting out in gear three or four. This is gonna be enough torque to be able to safely get the wheel moving, but also is gonna have enough power to get you up and going so that you're not fighting against balancing on the bike. If we're starting to go up a hill, ideally we wanna turn around, start down on a flat section, and then work our way to the hill. It's very awkward to try to start while on the bike, while on a hill, and fighting against gravity and all the resistance. Okay, so what do we do in this situation? We're down in the hardest gear, we're about to go up a steep hill. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure the bike is powered off so that when we go to crank the pedals, we don't injure ourselves or someone else around us. So the bike is powered off, it's onto the kickstand. You're gonna lean the bike up so that the rear wheel can rotate freely. And then you're simply going to use the thumb shifter, rotate the pedals, and we'll go ahead and shift all the way up. We're now in gear number four. I'm gonna go up one more gear. That way I'm starting in gear number three. All right, so now we're gonna power the bike back on. It comes back up into power level one. I like to double check by leaning the bike back up again, just pushing the throttle a little bit, and just making sure that that gear shift has been completed. 
It's always important to make sure that the system is rotating and without resistance when you're making a gear shift. So now that we're into the proper gear, we can go ahead and climb up this hill. So now we're gonna head back down the hill. And what's important is to maintain proper braking technique. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that we're seated firmly on the saddle. Our back is nice and straight, eyes up, looking ahead at the terrain. Fingers are on the brake levers. Quiet Cat comes with disc brakes and a two finger lever to give you a little extra power. On my Apex here, I've got hydraulic disc brakes, which have the ultimate stopping power and allow me to slightly modulate how much braking pressure I need. It's important that we don't just grab the brakes and hold them down the entire time. We wanna maintain rolling traction, which means keeping the wheels rolling as we go over rugged terrain. What we don't wanna do is squeeze both brakes all the way to the handlebars, locking up the wheels. It's important to maintain that rolling traction, especially when the terrain gets really rough or loose. That way the wheels are consistently rolling, but we're also able to add just a little bit of braking pressure. It's important to use both brakes. A lot of people think if I squeeze the front brake, I'm gonna flip over the handlebars. And that's just not the case. The Quiet Cat bikes are very heavy and designed specifically not to do that. So we wanna use both brakes. Now it is important when you're going around a turn, that's when you wanna release the front brake. We wanna avoid locking up the differential speed between the front and rear wheels. So what's important is when we go around a turn, that's when we want to get off of the front brake. That way the front wheel can roll and the rear wheel can follow behind. Obviously there's a differential speed between the front and rear wheels and we want to avoid locking up the front so that we don't pretzel over. Most electric bicycles today, including most quiet cat models, come with adjustable power levels. And you have anywhere from one to 10 different power levels of assist. And this is going to determine how much power you're gonna get out of the system. General rule of thumb is you wanna use as minimal assist as needed to overcome the terrain that you're on. This is gonna help save your battery range and it's also going to help you stay in control of the machine. What we don't wanna do is go into some rocky riverbed at full speed and have to manage just staying on the bike. Instead, what we wanna do is control the machine through the terrain safely. It's also important if you're out on the bike path or on the side of the road to make sure that you understand where the traffic is and understand at what speeds can you safely travel. If you're on a sidewalk with pedestrians, you don't wanna be in power level five where the bike is going to jerk forward every time you hit the throttle or move the pedals. Instead, you wanna use the power level that's appropriate to the terrain that you're on. So on my Apex here, I prefer power level three in eco mode. It has enough power for me to move with the machine and all of my gear and over most terrain. When I see a steep hill like this, I'll go up into level four, and for the steepest hills, I'll switch over to sport mode, give her all she's got. One thing to remember is that you can have all the power in the world, but you need to have grip. So it's important to make sure that you're maintaining grip on the rear wheel. So we don't wanna to have too much power, again, just enough power to overcome the terrain that we're riding. So those are just some of the basics on riding, shifting, and braking on an electric mountain bike. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you out on the trail.